we've been able to uh, particularly uh, put hotspots as uh, some of the slums that we have here in the city. They've marked the slums as uh, hotspots uh, for a bit of violence during the elections. And he says that there's going to be heavy deployment of police officers in the places where, as the police, they feel will, there will be some bit of chaos. And therefore, that's just one of the things that he said. Also, he's mentioned that uh, as a police, they also have gadgets that will be recording uh, any kind of hate speech. And they will be following through to see that uh, it is prosecuted. All right, that was Jafeth Kwame, the Nairobi police boss. Thank you so much for staying with us. So, gentlemen, want to uh, now take a look at uh, the numbers for Kiambu County right now as we, of course, follow through with what's happening there. Remember that Trail Odinga is... Uh, making his way to the county today and he has such a busy schedule so gentlemen let's just look at this uh, the numbers according to the 2013 poll results of course president uhuru kenyatta came out tops with 90.21 percent of uh, the vote and railo dinga came in with 61,700, which just accounted for 7.89 percent of the vote now the registered voters as per now as you can see is 1,180,920 and um, as you look at that also, very interesting to, uh, to discover also is that um, the population census um, back in 20 2009 put the population at about 1.6 million people. So, of course, uh, very interesting numbers that you have there. Looking at the uh, governor there, William Kabogo. Uh, he was elected as the governor there under uh, the National Alliance with almost half a million uh, voters there. But also we have James Nyoro who came in second from NAC. And then very interestingly, uh, somebody from ODM by the name Charles Gikaria did not leave empty-handed. He was able to garner 27,987 votes there. All right, we'll take a look at the senator position, Kimani Njoroge, at that uh, time, the National Alliance, garnering half a million, uh, seven, uh, 75,023 votes there. Uh, he was, of course, elected by a significant margin, receiving 73% of the total vote. And then you had uh, the second person, Stanley Gidunguri, there, following very, very far from behind Kanu. Uh, he was under Kanu that time, 73,709 uh, mm -hmm. votes. Let's just move on to the next uh, board there. All right, so those are other contenders uh, for the senatorial position, George Njau and Solomon Mugo. So you've been able to see just how the uh, president uh, fared at that time, getting 90% of the total vote, and Raila Dinga came in very far behind with 61,700. So, gentlemen, we were talking about the impact of uh, what Raila Odinga will be doing today. Are we likely to see his numbers grow from 61,700? Um, the kind of messaging that he's had over the campaign uh, period, uh, one for reform, one for sharing the, the national kick equally among everybody, is that likely to resonate with the people of Kiambu, considering also that... Uh, People, Kenyans vote highly uh, in regards to ethnic affiliations. Yeah, you're, you're true, Betty. Mm -hmm. Kenyans' uh, politics is ethnicized. But then that narrative is going to change to, to a very small extent this election, mm -hmm. simply because the cost of living has gone high, the, the economy is not doing so well. Even in your house, household, the budget you used to do before, uh, two years ago, is, has now changed, yes. you know. These are things that resonate well with the common Wananchi. And when you look at uh, NASA's uh, campaign this year compared to the last elections, mm -hmm. they are tailoring each manifesto for each region. So they have a message, specific message to each region. So when he's going to Kiambu, I'm, I'm sure he's going to give Kiambu a message that is tailored to suit their needs. This is what is happening here. Of course, the main narrative is the Unga revolution thing, and they're also feeling it. Because when you're going to buy Unga, it doesn't matter whether you're Kikuyu or Lua, no one asks for your ID. You're still going to buy it at the same, same price as any other Kenyans are buying it. So uh, he's going to talk to the needs of the Kiambu people. And then one, one other interesting thing is like Uhuru won the elections uh, to be president by less than 8,000 votes. That was the plus one votes mm -hmm. that Uhuru got. So the, getting the numbers, however small, 
they are, even in your competitors' uh, strongholds, is very crucial to this election. Because this election is going to be won with uh, only one thing, the voter turnout, and then that's just extra vote mm -hmm. that you can get. If you can even squeeze 10 extra votes from your opponent's stronghold, you need that. You need that. All right, Charles. Uh, well, I think um, very little will change in Kiambu in terms of their voter behavior. Uh, to be fair to Raila Odinga, I think if he's going to make any gains, it is going to be in the range of around, I don't think it's going above 10 mm. percent. Uh, because one thing, Kiambu is the home, 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 uh, home county for President Uru Kenyatta. There is a jubilee factor and there is the ethnicity factor. Mm -hmm. That one is something that has really not gone away in this politics. But uh, while there are issues that really have emerged in this uh, election, that have uh, attempted to make their way to the table of the agenda. But now these are issues that become secondary considerations and are only, they, they, they only now tend to influence the thinking of those areas which are considered uh, battleground mm -hmm. counties. But Kiambu, in all instances, is not a battleground county. Even when you see the NASA strategy, sometimes they even question the, jubilee, the numbers in, uh, in Kiambu because they know if there is an area that you are going to suffer a big hit in terms of numbers, mm -hmm. it is in Kiambu. And the Jubilee strategy in Kiambu is now on the reverse. They are trying to make sure they get as many numbers as possible because if you keenly follow even the campaign messages out there, they are saying, Kiambu, turn up, turn out in all your numbers because we want these numbers to annihilate, uh, to neutralize some numbers here. Yes. So the issue is, the issue of uh, ethnicity and party will be dominant factor, but there is something that I, I, I think has emerged in Kiambu, the one you mentioned about the census data mm. versus the registered, registered voter voters. data. But I think that one is uh, attributed to two things. Mm -hmm. Number one, you know Kiambu is just here in Nairobi. Mm. It borders Nairobi. Mm. There, there are so many people who are registered in Nairobi probably uh, by the census, but they went there to register in Kiambu as voters. As voters. And mainly, I want to call it the Waititu factor, the Babayao effect. Mm -hmm. You know, when Waititu moved from uh, Mbakasi to, to, to Kiambu, he moved with a lot of uh, people because the contest at that time at the gubernatorial level was pitting him against Kabogo, and, and Waititu needed to import numbers. So there's been a lot of importation <laughs> of people from Nairobi to Kiambu. So there's <laughs> nothing so queer about this. It's just people moving from Nairobi going to vote for Babayao in Kiambu, but the ultimate beneficiary is President Uru Kenyatta probably, because the disciple of Waititu is definitely mm -hmm. most likely going to be a disciple of uh, Uru Kenyatta. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay, gentlemen, let's also talk about uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta as his home turf is being raided. Uh, he's uh, in Machakos today, yeah. and he's going to be... Um, of course, touring the place and having uh, stopovers. Uh, we're not sure if he's going to be having a major rally there. But uh, I think it's going to be as complicated for him as it would be for Raila Odinga um, in his visit to Machakos. Uh, for Uru Kenyatta, I think uh, he has kind of an advantage uh, in uh, Kalonzo's backyard. This comes in uh, with the Mandeleo Chap Chap. Uh, thing with uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Governor Alfred Mutua. Mm -hmm. He is the incumbent governor of Machako. So uh, Uhuru has that advantage that he's going where the incumbent is supporting him. Then he also goes with the presidency title. So where he is, that automatically it, uh, where the president goes, it's converted into a state function. Mm -hmm. So he has the advantage of incumbency of going with the trappings of power. Then the current incumbent governor of Machakos is also supporting his bid. So Mandela Chap Chap to some extent has tried to upset the Kalonzo factor, but then not a, a, a bit, a little bit, but then the president is going to ride on that. Then uh, there has been several defections from Wiper to, uh, to to Jubilee yeah. Party in Kalonzo backyard. So that is also going to play to advantage and I'm sure they're going to parade those members of parliament who have def defected to like the white party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to read the wipe and tell the Ukambani people that your leaders are also with us, so yeah. you have to follow us. So it's going to be interesting in Machakos because Uhuru has some, he has some cool landing, he has a, some soft landing but as the, opposed to Raila. But in, the other thing is that, uh, you know, there have been conversations on how 
popular uh, Governor Alfred Mutua still is because Waipa really is still the dominant party there. He, yes. And he, and he left. Yeah, he, he is. He left the group. Yeah, he is. In fact, just to show that he's actually upset with Waipa is the wars that Wavinya Deti has been put to. Yeah. Wavinya Deti has gone to court. I think he's, if there's one aspirant who has lived in court corridors, yeah. it's Wavinya Deti. Yeah. He's going to court almost 10 times. Actually, there was a hearing. Again, that battle is not over. It's still at the Court of Appeal. They, they, they fought it on Friday, so we are still waiting for the judgment on that. So just to show that uh, Alfred Mutua is not sitting pretty, the wounds that he has engaged with Vinya and Eti are tremendous. Mm -hmm. Even writing to the extent of even writing to ICC mm -hmm. to come and investigate your opponent. I mean, how <laughs> basak can you go? <laughs> so so is, he, is, he, is he sensing defeat? Because you'd only do that for somebody who, you know, you feel is kind of like intimidating. Defi definitely. Yeah. When you're picking a war with an opponent, you don't pick a war with a weak opponent who's not going to give you a challenge. You'll definitely go for the person who gives you the sleepless nights who's going to give you a run for your money. Mm -hmm. And then, as much as uh, Alfred Mutu is trying, the Kalonzo factor in Okambani cannot be written mm -hmm. off. He's still the de facto leader of Okambani. Yes. And therefore, tidings are going to change. As much as uh, Alfred Mutua is an incubant, he's going to fight for that seat. And the other thing also considering that also Charity Ngilu, who is also you know, a, a, a leader with a title in Okambani, uh, is now on the NASA brigade. Uh, I would like really to see um, uh, Alfred Mutua put out any sort of fight against these two um, you know, giants of uh, leaders in the Ukambani region. I think I bet you, if you observe uh, the behavior of uh, Alfred Mutu of late, he's gone quiet in terms of uh, trying to endorse uh, Jubilee mm -hmm. in Ukambani because, uh, to be oh, fair, he's not doing it as loudly, yeah. Yeah. It as, as, loudly as he used to do. Mm. Right now, he has realized that his fight is with Ravinia, and the, more, the less luggage he has, the better for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, on the flip mm -hmm. side, I think Kalonzo is actually the weakest link in Jubilee, mm -hmm. in NASA, mm -hmm. because. Uh, to the extent that Jubilee now believes they can get at least, their target there is not to win. They, they only want 25%. The, they, are, they are now thinking they can even get 25% in one or two Kambani counties, mm. simply because Kalonzo has not been able to put his house, his house in order. He has a fight with uh, Alfred Mutua. He picked the, la the recent fight with the Charity Ngilu when he went to Kitui and he openly endorsed uh, Governor Malombe, I think. And he, he said in the rally that uh, Ngilu, if you wanted us to work together, you should have, you should have joined uh, Wiper. And of course, there is the issue of Johnston Mudama. Let mm. us not uh, forget that because I think uh, even apart from Alfred Mutua, if there is a strong mobilizer that Wiper has lost in terms of coming out strongly to fight for NASA in Okambani, it is... Uh, Johnston Mudama because he does not only bring that mobilization uh, strength that he has, also the financial muscle that we know yeah. is one of the people who is really able to put up a very strong mm. campaign in Ukambani and even across the country. Okay. And also David Musila. So when we want to count the losses that Kalonzo Musioka has suffered in the first few, mm. uh, first few weeks, uh, we are trying, we, we see a situation where whereas Jubilee will not, is definitely not going to win in Ukambani, they are now considering Ukambani as one of the regions where the counties can give them at least 25%. Mm -hmm. That's because this war is on two fronts. The president must secure 50% plus one, but also must secure at least 25% yes. in at least half the, of the counties. the counties. So that is the Jubilee strategy now. Mm -hmm. Go to Ukambani, get that 25% and get out. And get out. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time. Jesse Odor, he's a lawyer and, and a political analyst, together with Charles Kipkule, who's also a political analyst. Thank you very much for your time. All right, so we're about to wrap up things here on the show. But before then, let's just take a look at other stories that are hitting the headlines across our borders. And Zimbabwe has auctioned cattle worth one million U.S. dollars to raise money for the African Union Foundation to help end the donor dependency syndrome. President Robert Mugabe says he made the donation of 300 cattle from his herd. And other Zimbabweans doubled the number.